Hey there, I am on to negation issue number seven to start off this video. You can see the video of the first six ones and we're back to our regular team, Tony Bedard, Paul Pelletier, Dave Micus, and James Rochelle. And uh, another good issue, a little strangulation cover there as uh, we had, we have a, a reuniting this issue of uh, an, an issue three or four in the jailbreak issue. Some of the uh, guys who were captive took off on a spaceship. They were all supposed to be on the spaceship, but things went wrong. And only, I don't know, half of them went on the spaceship. The other half had to find their own way off that planet that was exploding. Um, and we've been following the people who had to make find their own way off without the spaceship and now they're reunited with it. we also get a little look at charon the main villain we get a few pages with he he's the guy who conquered the the whole universe here and we find that he's once again some nice visualization from paul pelletier here nice drawing nice visualization of this alien stuff we find out that he's got some somebody captured supposedly from the cross-gen universe that's how he found out about them uh and uh he's been trying to question them <clears throat> pardon me it's early and and then we get a few pages of that and then we get on with this um the two halves of the people from the cross-gen universe meet up and they fight each other because evan leah is really angry that she got left behind uh, and she's the most powerful of them. And what's his name? Obadiah Kane, right? I keep getting his name. Oh, keep getting his uh, name wrong. <laughs> she beats up one of them. He's trying to get him to stop fighting, but they won't. So he kind of uses it to, to teach a lesson because the most powerful of them, the the woman from the first, Evan Leah, is just you know she's like royalty and she's got this snobbish used to getting her way attitude uh so she ends up uh not quite getting her way and hopefully learning a lesson but and then we switch to um we're back to the captain who's been hunting them and the lawgiver shows up look at he's one of the super powerful guy he's one of the right hand men of uh charon here right that's his name He's one of the right-hand men of this guy who are like, you know, the super powerful cosmic beat, the silver surfers or, you know, Thors of this universe. And he, he reveals to the captain, he's like, yeah, you didn't screw up. I just wanted to test their powers. And then it ends with uh, another cliffhanger. Uh, I'll give you all the cliffhangers. It's not much of a cliffhanger. Uh, the lawgiver, the, this big powerful guy shows up on the planet with he he like makes an appearance he's like oh let's see what you guys are doing so as we see that and the next issue they're gonna have to deal with that lawgiver guy who's super powerful so this this was a this was a good character and, and here they they actually give us a rundown of all the other people they ran into so there's a little roll call going on but once again another fun issue um not not as much running in this issue more fighting <laughs> as they, the, the survivors fight amongst themselves. But nice visualization, nice rubble everywhere. A good, solid issue. Alrighty. Decided to read eight right away. <laughs> Same team. And man, these, a comic with a cliffhanger at the end of every issue really encourages you to keep reading. Unlike the structured... Uh, Oh, unlike the written for the trade stuff, which doesn't always do that. But in this one, we open with Charon again, the main villain. And he kind of gives a recap of the series from his point of view. And he, we learn that he kind of let them escape from the prison planet because 
he's in, he wants to see their abilities and is interested in conquering the world. Oh, by the way, I got that guy's name wrong last video. It's Obregon Kane is the lead uh, character. They don't use his, they only used his name once this issue. They usually just call him Kane. So I always forget Obregon is his first name. So, and then we get the, the Lawbringer is there to uh, kick ass and take names. So he ends up killing a lot of the fodder guys. A lot of the guys who we haven't been following this whole strip, he ends up just killing. And they don't know what to do about him. And this, this guy's like, dude, he's a lawbringer. They're going to kill us all. And he wants to, the lawbringer wants to test Evan Lee, the most powerful at first. But he also knows that she doesn't have her full powers and that she needs the guy Javi to hold her hand so she can have her full powers. We, we hardly even get to see Obregon Kane in this one because there's not much he can do. Although we get an interesting little side thing here where we find out that um, this is the captain who's been chasing them, uh, who's been working with, the, he he's the, was the warden. What's his name? They, they give me his name here somewhere. But he hasn't seen his family since he enlisted. But we get a few pages of him going home to his family to pick up his dog or something like that. Uh, and then we're back to the Lawbringers. Once again, nice nice storytelling here. A lot of panels in those pages. A lot of things going on. Ev Here's a panel of Evan Leah actually scared because she doesn't know if she can take on this Lawbringer. And he's just messing people up. This He's just good fight. He's just messing people up. They're trying their best. But at some point, he's just like, yeah, I'm going to kill you all. Uh, lot, lots of angled panels and fighting and disorientation. Good stuff. And then it ends with, well, we're, we're going to give a little spoiler here. Because they knew this was, they even said this. They're, they're like, what happens, uh, I think Kane even said once, what happens when they decide to just kill Javi? And so he ends up with a big hole in his chest at the end of the la this issue. Is he dead? He, he's a healer too, though. So I don't know if he's dead or not here. But if I remember correctly, there's a mini series that happens around issue 10 to 12 that I have, it might be mixed in with here, with Javi on his own. They, they, I think they left him for dead at one point. Maybe this point, I don't know. And so he gets his own mini series for three issues and it's kind of mediocre. But I'll I'll read that one along with this one. Nice issue eight, fight scenes galore. Now I just finished negation number nine. Uh, boy, our usual, our usual creative team. You can see on the cover, the gang is all defeated. And we take some interesting plot twists in this one. We get Javi from the end of the last issue with the little baby. I tried to rescue the little baby and got uh, whooped up on by the lawgiver. So then the lawgiver goes about um, kicking everybody's butts. But, and uh, Kane tries to get him out of there. And then we go back to, as he's kicking butts, we go back to Charon, the big bad, and we find that he's torturing somebody from the cross-gen universe. He's messing with him, who turns out to be an Atlantean from, uh, I think the series Crux. That's one I read some of, but not a lot. Uh, there's a bunch of Atlanteans who are powerful on Earth. They are really old. So he's one of them. And he's an Atlantean with a sigil. And then the big plot twist kind of comes when uh, the lawgiver blasted the woman and her baby, but the baby lived through a direct plasma bolt of some kind. Uh, and so that got the lawgiver's attention. He's like, I'm going to take this baby back to Charon. Meanwhile, we get a subplot with a captain picking up his dog. Another good, uh, that, that's the captain of the, uh, the warden of the, of the original prison, prison planet who was hunting our people. And he stops at his childhood home. Once again, we get some good alien imagery in this as the dog says big vicious thing that can that can kick other 
kicks the other dog's asses in the in his crew. So I guess he's using his dog to hunt Kane now. Well, that's been plot been going on in the background. Uh, then then we end with uh, the Lawbringer being bringing the baby to Charon, and they're going, "Hmm, what is up with this baby?" And I think the baby becomes a main point later on. So this issue was cool. Lots of good fights, lots of good imagery. Quickly moves forward. Um, like I said, our our guys weren't even able to escape the lawgiver. He grew disinterested in them as he grew more interested in the baby. So uh, good stuff. Uh, we'll see what happens in issue 10. So now we've got negation number 10 with the little baby. <laughs> Our usual crew, Bedard, Pelletier, Makis, and Rochelle. And this one, this one, this issue is kind of a pause. Except for the Looney Tunes-like cartoon trying to kill the little baby. There's Char on the big bad, and it says, um, Agenda, Determine Subjects, Terminal Threshold. Once again, some nice imagery. As they try to figure out why they can't kill the baby by trying to kill the baby. Meanwhile, back on the planet, our uh, ragtag group of survivors of the prison planet are um, trying to figure out what to do next and if they sh how and if they should rescue a baby. Lasers don't kill the baby. <laughs> like I said, good imagery. And we also get the origin. The, the mother tells the, uh, her story of how she she was a farm girl and hands, a handsome stranger came there to the farm one day and uh, she ended up uh, making a baby with him and then he left two days later and her family kicked her out. Oh, the giant, the giant rubble didn't kill the baby. Trial seven. Uh, <laughs> dipping him in gold didn't kill the baby and then... Uh, as she was kidnapped from the cross-gen universe to negation space, she had her baby. So there's something special about this baby. They don't want, know what. Uh, they they bury Javi, which comes back later in the Mark of Charon miniseries. The killer aliens don't harm the baby. Like it's, it's very Looney Tunes here. The electricity doesn't kill the baby. <laughs> Uh, once, once again, there's a pause issue, lots of talking back on the planet, trying to figure out their plan. Charon nukes the baby. Which seems to leave it confused, but not dead. So, like, th this whole issue was just kind of a pause. Charon's spending his time trying to kill the baby, the big bad guy. And everybody else is trying to figure out what their next step is, so... A little comedy in this issue, number 10. Okay, this is going to be the last comic in this particular video. Still got a bunch of issues of negation to go, including a miniseries. And this is a one-shot called Negation Longbringer. And I have these uh, in chronological order. So it's like this came at between issue 10 and 11. So I figured I'd, I'd want to, I didn't want to look up every, all the, whenever I read it, I didn't want to look up. So I just put this in between issue 10 and 11. So I know that's where it goes. And this is, uh, first of all, it's by uh, Tony Bedard and Rudy Nebres, penciling and inking himself. And Laura Villari on colors. It doesn't look like any new Rudy Nebres I've seen, probably because of the coloring and and the fact that so there's so many color holds in it. So there's like a purple guy and a blue guy, and the blue guy is Charon, the main villain of the story. And the purple guy is, what is it, a polyon? Some, some mixture of Apollo and lion. And it goes back in time to the... We start with this author scientist who was there at the beginning when Charon crossed over into this universe and that that's that's this, this is sort of a Charon origin story and he came over into this universe with his people and with this guy and ended up fighting with that guy because he wanted to because it turns out that the negation universe the laws of physics are constantly in flux 
And Charon wants to bring order to it all. The classic, you know, order versus chaos thing going on with Charon. But it was a pretty interesting little story. It was, wasn't as, uh, some nice imagery in it too. Wasn't as sort of action-oriented as the rest of the Negation series. It was more, here's some backstory for Negation. Here's some backstory where Charon came from. Uh... And uh, so, so it was pretty cool in that. It just, it just adds, uh, just adds a little flavor to. Oh, there's, there's the uh, Arwin from Sojourn statue. I actually have that over there in my shelf. I'll have to tell you that story someday. I bought it on a whim on eBay many years ago. But yeah, Rudy Nebra is not looking like. I'm so used to Nudy, Rudy Nebra's Conan stuff from the seventies. And this has got some hints of it, especially in this, in this old man here, in the fantasy way he's drawn. But it's, it, it doesn't look that much like Nebres. It's it's it's, it's kind of interesting that way. Uh, but yeah, just just a one shot, just giving us some backstory with negation. Uh, we'll see. Have to see how the rest of the story goes in the next video.